Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Coming to you from Waikiki Beach, looking out of the on the blue Pacific right now. There's a single ship out there sailing the surface flat. Don't see any surfers out. We're coming to you right above the altar at St. Augustine's by the Sea. Our 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 condo is is 25 floors above that uh, above the church, and so actually our radio. Um, where we record our radio in our studio is just about exactly above the altar. So we'll be right back with our guest, Brian Miller. Uh, we're going to be talking about evangelization, how to, how to reach uh, men and, and, of course, women for Christ. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. We're like, stoked to have our guest Brian Miller with us today. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, day here in Waikiki Beach. Um, one of the things that one of the things that uh, we learn here is people say, "Well, what should we do when we get to Hawaii?" And I always tell them one of the best things you can do is nothing. You know, go go down to the beach, uh, watch a watch what a palm tree does, how, what how the wind affects a palm tree. Look out at the horizon. Look at the waves. Watch the sunset. Go for a hike in the mountains and just and just sit and be still. I think in our life, our busy, busy life today, um, we don't have a lot. We don't give ourselves enough time to just sit and be still. Go go to a Eucharistic adoration and spend some time before the Lord. And so we're serious. One of the best things we can do when people come, we never know who's going to wash up on the shore here. <laughs> people that follow our ministry might contact us or something. Our friends come. But I also tell them get get to get to a cliff someplace uh, or the edge of the ocean, because usually a life changing events kind of happen when we're not not always, but when we're on the edge, uh, it tends to be kind of often a change. Like if we're on the edge of of, of a little bit dangerous cliff, or um, we're living a little bit on the edge, you kind of get more of a sense for uh, for living. My son Jeremiah has dropped into eighty five foot waves. Um, does he have a death wish? No, he has a he has a great wish for living life to the fullest. And to a Christian, that means having a life of adventure. Because if you're a Christian, you're called to be bold. You're pro you're, you're called to be a witness. And uh, and if you just every day say, Lord, open up the doors to share your to share the gospel, you you'll be amazed how. Um, just getting that little nudge from the Holy Spirit when you encounter someone, how it can open doors for you to uh, have a conversation, come alongside them and affirm them and encourage them and maybe share with them, salt them a little bit with the gospel. Brian Miller is here in the house with us. He's the Director of Evangelization and Discipleship. Wait a minute. Brian, all I want to get is evangelize. I don't want to do the discipleship part. That. Oh man, that's not gonna work for a while. Yeah, <laughs> you're so many. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, glad. So stoked to have you here. So, what, what is the, what is the what is, what do you do as the director of evangelization and discipleship, Archdiocese that's of St. A, Louis? Yeah, that's a great question. I've been at the diocese about 13 years, uh, which is a pretty good little run here. Uh, and I started doing young adult ministry, young adult outreach, moved into youth, young adult Newman centers, and then about four years ago, I moved into this role as director of evangelization and discipleship. And it was actually right as COVID was starting. So Archbishop Carlson kind of recognizing uh, as we were shutting things down that we were going to have to find a way to rebuild and, and to, mm. to grow the church on the other side of that. So move me mm. into this role in April of 2020. What a time to start a new job, you know. Exactly. Or, or, or a new role. Exactly, but, yeah. uh, and really in that time, it's been a lot about giving people a vision for what evangelization is and helping them understand but that's the mission of the church. So um, we've been in the midst of a big planning process in the Archdiocese of St. Louis. We've been, you know, closing and merging some parishes like a lot of Midwest and Rust Belt dioceses are needing to do because of population shift and just the way that the church has grown or, or hasn't grown and, and struggling in vocations in different ways. We have we have a lot of priests. We still, we have too many parishes or the parishes aren't aren't where the people are and things like that. Mm -hmm. So. In the midst of that, we titled it uh, All Things New. Like every diocese, we want to come up with a good, catchy name for our our strategic planning process. But it was really, it was rooted in, um, 
you know, Revelation 21 talks about the Lord making all things new. And, and Pope Paul VI quotes it in uh, his great document of evangelization on the modern world. And so it's, it's bringing the good news of Jesus Christ into every part of humanity and, and making all of creation new. And really that's what our goal is. Like, so as we've been doing our, our planning, we've been doing our formation for folks We say, you know, what are your, what are the ministries you have? What are you doing in your parishes? And how do we discern and pray how the Lord wants to renew that and how he wants it to make it, make it his own. And so we, we talk about really there's institutional evangelization and there's this big shift going on in the church right now where we're, everybody's talking about it, right? Monsignor Shea wrote the book on it from Christendom to apostolic mission. And understanding the structures we had that used to preach the gospel. The structures aren't doing that as well anymore. Uh, we have to rethink those. So we have the institutional side, but we also have the individual side. And that a lot of times folks are sitting around waiting for my parish to tell me what to do or waiting for the, the school or whatever it is to do the evangelization or tell us exactly what the marching orders are. Uh, but really each of us has, has a missionary call. And um, as we develop our own personal relationship with Jesus, that discipleship with Jesus, you know, to be a good steward of that relationship, the fruit of it is evangelization. You can't, you can't keep it to yourself. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of what we're doing. We do a lot of um, training, a lot of formation, a lot of leadership development. I think about, um, I think about three things we need to evangelize. A lot of times we need conviction that the gospel message is real, right? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and you can't come to the Father except through me. So if we're not convicted about the reality of that message, you know, and we read different parts of the gospel, Matthew 25, Jesus says the way is narrow and those who are on it are few, uh, and the way that leads to destruction is wide and those who are on it are many. If we're not convicted about Jesus' own words, um, we're not going to evangelize. So we have to be really convicted about that. The second thing we need, it's three C's, right? So the second is confidence. So we have to be able to talk about our faith in a really profound way. Um, you know, Matthew Kelly did that study a few years ago, right? The, uh, the dynamic Catholic study, 0.6% of Catholics feel equipped to evangelize, to talk about their faith. Um, so most people, even if they want to share the good news, they don't know how, or they don't feel confident doing that. So just, you know, learning some of the Catholic apologetics and then also some of the cultural apologetics that are out there too. How do we engage the world on the hot button issues and, and feel confident talking about that? And the third one is just conviction. Really, it's just conviction that comes from the Holy Spirit, from having a life of prayer, and that comes from community and accountability. That mm -hmm. that um, that courage. Did I say conviction or courage? The third one well, is you courage. Had said, you had said conviction. Yeah, good. Got I said conviction twice, didn't I? Yeah. 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 Well, the third well, one well is, you know is what? Courage. Jesus, Jesus yeah. used to say, "A man, a man." I say to you. He, there you go. I'm he didn't to use one. A man. He say, he's like yeah. he's just saying, "I'm listen closely. I'm going to repeat myself here." So yeah. That's right. Well, I repeated myself, but. The third one is courage that comes from, from uh, being rooted in prayer and the Holy Spirit and the courage that comes from accountability, knowing that you're not alone and that people are walking with you in this journey. So it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, and it's time. You know, the th thing is, is so many people think, well, okay, I want to share with someone the gospel, but we, we can get bogged down because I think I have to explain the Catholic Church to them. You know, I have to know my teaching. I have to know my, my, my catechism, which is all good. But, you know, Peter said... Uh, be prepared for with a reason for your hope but uh the bible says jesus said you will be my witnesses that's a totally different thing than being a teacher being able to explain all the doctrine um it's it's more about this is what i think the good way to communicate with people is this is what it's it's not to throw the catholicism at them right off the bat it's to say i know this guy's name is jesus and he's changed my life and begin to share actually the gospel and then you can invite them in, you know, to uh, to more of a dialogue about the deeper things. But I remember when we had a deep conversion experience uh, uh, back in the day of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, and my dad uh, followed suit. Within a few days, he had that same experience. And but he was all worried because uh, someone said, "Now you got to go out. And you got to be." He said, "You got to go out and be a witness." And my dad said, "What? I'm going to see an accident." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's right. not Getting really called to the stand, yeah. <laughs> but what's so cool is like Cindy and I, we go down for coffee in the mornings. We do our little uh, prayer time there, and and we find ourselves here in Hawaii a lot of opportunity to just talk with people. Well, what are you doing here on vacation? Uh, what what do you plan to be doing while you're here? And then that opens up conversations that often leads us to a place where we can just share share about Jesus. And then you can bring them 
closer to yourself. But you know, I love to study all these great books and everything. But that those books probably aren't going to aren't going to aren't going to be what opens the door. What's going to open the door is that I know Jesus. You can know Jesus, and um, I can share with you about what He's done in my life. And uh, and then you can open the door to the to those deeper questions. But usually it starts out with just someone looking looking not looking so happy and just saying, oh, you know, kind of opening the door for them to talk about that, and then saying, let me pray for you. And then I'll, and then things just then then it's then as Jason Jones, my, my good buddy, says, then then it's Holy Spirit action plan. I find myself often the first thing I do is just say, well, can I pray for you for a moment? I don't, I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to embarrass you. But in fact, I won't even ask. I'll just say, well, Jesus, we just ask you to, to bless them and bring, bring them their answers. So it's, it starts out with being a person that loves Jesus and then sharing uh, the good news of your friend. We're talking with Brian Miller. He is the director of, of evangelization and discipleship discipleship for the Archdiocese of St. Louis. Holds a master's degree in theology from the Augustine Institute. I'm so jealous. Yeah, it's we, a, a amazing place, and we're really lucky that they're moving into our backyard here in St. Louis. So yeah. Get excited. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to Notre Dame fcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to Barnes & Noble or go to Amazon or go to our website, uh, schoolofmanliness.com or go to EWTN's catalog. Go to your local Catholic bookstore. Uh, my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness. I have a copy of it right here, I think. It's actually been out for almost a year now, but it's, it's, it's sustained itself uh, time and again, moving into the top 10 in Christian books for men. Um, and I think it's because this book talks with men the way you would if you were sitting on the, on the back deck having a shot of whiskey and a cigar and just talking story. It's just practical common sense, uh, but very common sense often is the very deepest type of, of wisdom about the different areas of what it means to be a man. And I think right now men need to have that conversation with each other. 
there's a lot of young men that don't even know what a man is anymore. They've been they, they've been lied to by society. Uh, maybe the, the father in their home isn't uh, maybe not even there. And so a lot of young men uh, are attracted to this book, too. And it's also a way for fathers to sit down uh, once a week and read part of a chapter with their sons and just go deeper into these things. It's so hard to say to your son, hey, uh, what did you learn at school today? Oh, nothing. What did you, what are you, gonna, what did, you do last uh, all day? Uh, oh, nothing. But this, get, this helps grip their attention. And I love the, the subtitle. It's 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? My wife is a cowgirl. And we were driving along the beach here, going up Diamond Head a few years ago, and she said, hey, Bear, you're going to love this song. And she turned up a song, I think, by Paula Cole, and she's singing, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Where's My John Wayne? And we need, we need, to, we need to evangelize. We need to, we, need for, uh, we need to really still be an example of what it really means to be a man because it's, men, it's the men who, uh, I don't know, it's, it, it, there's been studies done that if a, if a woman is faithful and, her, and the husband isn't as far as taking children to the church, that about a third of the kids will stay in the church when they become adults. If the husband and wife to go, the, go together, it's more like 75, 80% that, that will stay in the church. But if it's just the man that takes the kids to the church, it's more like two, over two thirds will stay in the church. That's the significance of what you as men, the role that you have. And we need to reestablish that role of servant leadership, of sacrificial love, um, and, and we need to reestablish brotherhood. So 12 Rules for Manliness, where have all, all the cowboys gone? I know we have many women listeners. Buy this book for your, um, buy this book for your husband and ask him if he will read it. You know, we have uh, several men have said, I, I'm not, I don't like to read books, but they'll read the first chapter, and then they'll read the whole book over a weekend and then start over. So uh, I challenge you to uh, get the book 12 Rules for Manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? Give it to your sons. Give it to your friends. Um, really stoked about this book. I've read other books, but this one I think really hits the core of what a man is. Speaking of real men, we have, uh, we have with us as our guest Brian Miller, uh, who uh, just to look at him, I go, when I first met Brian on the, uh, right now on our, on our interview, I asked him, uh, so what sports did you do? And he said, threw the discus, shot put. Uh, he looks hammer like he, throw. Yeah. hammer throw that was I my th- favorite one yeah. oh man you know i remember once in high school i was i i thought i tried some track so I, I i worked on throwing the discus and i'm just doing so good and then there's that moment when there's there's kind of a group behind you and i was about to let loose right into that group you know i had <laughs> my timing i was just just learning and i i oh it scared me to death but so 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 that's what, what kind of training did you have to do to do that brian well, I had to get big, first of all. So it was really kind of funny. I, I, um, when I started high school, I was 125 pounds and five foot six. You don't so look I ran like cross it. country. Yeah, not, okay. yeah. I had a little late growth spurt, you know. Uh, so I ran cross country and I and then I wrestled. I wrestled in the 125 pound weight class. And uh, in wrestling, I broke my arm, just straight in half, both bones all the way through, and I was in this huge cast. How did you, how did you do that? The, the other kid was a lot better than me. And he, uh, and he said, here, I'm going to break he your took, arm. He, he took me down and fell all the way on top of me, all of his weight on my arm. And it just, boom, right there. It's like when I picked it up and my hand was just dangling. You know, I went wide as a ghost. Uh, it's so, not, my, it was that not hap- pretty. You know? That happened to one of my sons playing basketball with older kids. And I, I just went weak. I, I've never had that feeling before of seeing, my, you know. It just looked like my yeah. hand was detached. Yeah, yeah it's it like gross. It's like, that's not supposed to look like that. Why, no. why is it doing that? Did you, did, you, did you faint? Did you go into shock? Tell I, the truth. I, Tell the I, truth. I pretty much did. Yeah, I had a, they had to ambulance me to the hospital because it was so bad they couldn't stabilize it. So, yeah, it was, it was not great. It was not great. Was it painful? Uh, I don't remember it being incredibly painful because of the shock. You probably almost don't even right. notice. I had, you know, well, I had a couple injuries yeah. like that. So when you got there, yeah. the doctor said, well, we can't fix it, but we can make the other arm work just like the like this one. That's, that's exactly broke the right. Other one. No, I remember I had to go into surgery because they had to set it, and I, I had this mm. vivid memory. They put you on a lot of painkillers and, and drugs going into surgery, and I had all these pillows stacked up around me, my arms propped up, and, on, and I was seeing double, and I came with the TV. My, my siblings were watching the movie Babe with the talking pig. You so know? they could care less about so, you, right? So there's They're, like two talking pigs going on the TV, and I'm waking up out of this, and I was just – I was really confused. It was like, don't do drugs, kids. You know, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is not good. <laughs> but aren't you glad that they knocked you out when they did, when they did yeah. that? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, I know my, but, my wife had, had surgery a, few day, a, few, uh, a couple years ago. 
And when she came out, the nurse asked her, so how did you meet your husband? And it was so sweet because she, she was delirious or she probably wouldn't have said it, but she said, it's a miracle. For me, maybe not for her. Hey, but while we're recording this, we got two brothers in the house. They're working on something right here in the studio. So, uh, the kind. Good to see you guys. Men at work. So, uh, anyway. Go. Yeah. So, uh, Brian, so, so speaking about, can you talk story with us about how, how you reach men, about, about specifically evangelization? Yeah, it's a really important thing uh, in our culture. We uh, here in the Archdiocese, we run a conference called the Catholic Men for Christ Conference. You know, we get about a thousand men together on a Saturday uh, in the spring, usually around February, around President's Day, and and because we're just really convicted that the men are a really important part of it. You know, mm -hmm. and I think it's really interesting. I think as I'm, you know, in my own parish life and my own life as a man, it's. It's really, I, I love this uh, quote I heard one time that women bond face to face, but men bond side by side. That's right. You know? That's so, exactly right. That is so true. Yeah. yeah. So just like just being in the trenches together and doing things together. So it's funny we run this conference, but really the conference is a goal of, of getting men just to know each other and to, to pursue Jesus, but then just to run together to do things. So yeah. I think some of the best manly evangelization is... Um, it, you, know, you do things like pick up sports or you can do, you know, service projects or, or whatever. I mean, really, you can pick anything. But and this goes for all of evangelization, really. It's that it's like that Stephen Covey principle of, of the seven habits of highly effective people. Right. It's you have to begin with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. So I can go and I can spend a ton of time with guys and pour my life into them. But if my end isn't their conversion, their salvation, their relationship with Jesus and, and being willing to challenge them along the way, it. it you know, sometimes people learn by example and sometimes people pick up on, on the subtleties, right? But sometimes we have to be really bold in just inviting people in to have those opportunities to reflect on their life and, and to think about their relationship with Jesus. And I think that as guys get a little bit older too, so as they as the kids start to get a little bit older, they start to think about, you know, what's what's my input in my kids' lives? What kind of man do I want to be? What kind of legacy do I want to have? And I think as, as men really move into that role of provider, as they start to mature a little bit and get into their career, um, they, they start to think about themselves differently than, than ambition. It becomes about um, almost inherently, there's a little bit of that sacrificial love in there. At some point that switch it has, yeah, it does. tends to yeah. happen. It has to happen. So if we can, if we can get them to, to ponder and reflect on those things, I think it's really important. Another, another thing I talk about a lot in evangelization, I think, you know, we spend so much of our lives looking down nowadays, right? So we're looking down at our phones. So we get sucked internally and, and this is in, like um, the selfishness almost that comes from the consumption of our cell phones and that we were made to look up. We were made to look at the stars and to wonder about our place in the universe. And I think that, that we have so much consumption in our society. We have so much ambition sometimes in our secular careers that if we can just create the space for wonder and awe, to think about mm -hmm. who God is, to think about our place in the universe and, and what God's plan for us is. And then again, to, to be in guys' lives, to be able to have those conversations and create the spaces for those, I think it's a huge and really, really important piece of the puzzle. I think that's so cool what you said. But it is true, brothers, you know, that fellowship is like it's fellows in the same ship. You know, there's something, we, we sail our boat, Spirit of Adventure, out in the Caribbean. We, from time to time, we'll have men on board, you know, we'll, have, we'll host them. And uh, there's it, it forges relationships when you're when you're you know one guy's on the on the winch and another guy's you know at the helm and someone else is looking at the navigation. You're you're working towards a common goal. That's why I think things like Knights of Columbus and and active and and groups like that. It's you need the time where you like I love go to speak to big men's conferences, but without the small groups of brotherhood, nothing will continue. Right, and that's so. The key. And so, and then that that small that small group of men doing something together uh, is the difference. I was I was we were out evangelizing once. I, I was at a surf contest in Cocoa Beach, Florida, and the local church, Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church, there in Indian Atlantic, sponsored our tandem surfing contest. And that's where you lift a woman when you surf. And uh, and I and I and so we're, we were gonna, we were evangelizing on the beach. Catholics evangelizing on the beach, and it was so interesting because I overheard uh, this one uh, Protestant group. Uh, 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 see, surfers for Christ or something like that, and I heard them. I heard them saying, "Go and ask people if they're saved, and if they say they're saved, you can skip. You can go on and talk to someone else." As as if, 
as if that's all there was to it was a one-time uh, right. moment. Uh, when we get back, we're going to be talking with uh, our, our, our guest, Brian Miller, about, about that. There's, there's evangelizing, and then there's discipleship. Right in the word dis- dis- disciple is the word discipline. So we're going to talk about, talk about that, that process of, 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 of transformation and renewal in the Lord. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, And for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics, as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, schoolofmanliness.com. It used to be called Bear's School of Manliness, but for years I was just trying to get that basic website, schoolofmanliness.com, and we've got it now. So uh, you can go there, and men, you can sign up to be part of our our man cave. Uh, A lot of men don't feel comfortable on Facebook or it just doesn't interest them, but the concept of being able to share uh, moments, uh, you know, like right now we have a brother that's on a trip because he's... uh, his, his uh, a family member is dying. In that man cave, we posted something two days ago, and all the men are praying for him. So we have a non-Facebook community there at the man cave, and then we have a three-year curriculum, the School of Manliness, that as men, we all go through together. Um, once a month, we have a Zoom meet, meet, video meetup. But the idea is for the men to, be, to develop their own uh, small groups wherever they live, their own men's groups wherever they live, using whatever uh, vehicle that they want want to use but we we help them to we help them with that within that community to go deeper but the coolest thing i think about it is that the curriculum is something that the fathers are using with their sons uh, the sons can have their own login credentials they can't go to the man cave the community site but they can go in and the fathers can actually track their son's progress and then talk, sit and talk story with their sons so go to school of we invite you to, to check it out so i want to talk with you um a little bit about this this area our guest brian miller of of discipleship there's there's um there is this feeling there you you mentioned it earlier how the the way to heaven is narrow and the way to hell is wide and to give somebody the false false assurance because because you were saved once because you you prayed that prayer that you can go basically and live like hell you know you there needs to be a, a a an ongoing and deepening uh relationship with god so and that's i think where brotherhood comes in is where we, we help disciple each other. Can you talk a story about that? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I love the word disciple comes from a Greek word, which I'll probably mispronounce, but it's like methetis, methetis, um, and it, it means follower or student. And I love this idea the, of the disciple, especially in Jesus' time, right? The students of the rabbi were, were covered in the dust of the rabbi because they followed him around from town to town as he taught. And as he would teach, they would sit at his feet and and listen and they would learn and there would be dialogue back and forth and he would challenge them and he would would just kind of have this conversation with them and that's that's how they learn by watching the master do it and i and so for me um i i think of the men in my life in particular who discipled me who who invested in me i had a big conversion uh, that year i broke my arm when john paul ii came to st louis in 1999 i was in high school and I had been, I just knew I was missing out on something. I didn't, I it was you know, around the church, but I wasn't practicing it in a way that was meaningful. We'd go to mass most of the time, but, but I didn't care. I was, I was drifting. I was getting with the rough crowd and, and 
in that moment when when John Paul II came into this youth rally, uh, I realized he brought with him something of of hope, something of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God that that I was missing in my life, and it just really convicted me to take that next step. The next step was accepting an invitation of a friend who inviting me who had been inviting me for for weeks to go to his high school youth group, uh, but I didn't want to go because I thought it was nerdy or stupid or I didn't need it in my life. And then after that, I went the next week and the next week and the next week, and that's where I met. Some of the men who who really uh, the core team members, these young adults who are investing and in, in, in pouring out themselves to me, who taught me the faith, yes, but they also taught me what it meant to live as a man of God. So mm. we would go down to the soup kitchen and serve the poor, and we would get together. We would do scripture studies, and and I just saw the witness of their everyday life. I saw the way that they were living their faith, and that's what I wanted. And, and I, I continued to make a decision, not just that first decision, that initial encounter with Jesus, but the ongoing encounter, the daily conversion, the daily saying yes to Jesus. And and you need discipleship to do that because you need community to do that. I, I talk a lot about and think a lot about accountability and the role of accountability in the church and in our lives. And, and like, yes, we need in the church, we need better top-down accountability to, to follow the rules and, and, and strive for excellence. But but I think the best accountability is, is mutual accountability. It's the accountability of, of brothers just putting their arms around one another and saying, this is who you said you want to be. Like, how's it going? What's holding you back? What are you struggling with? How can I help you? How can I support you? And if we can if we can do that, I think that that changes everything. So I, I went on from high school into college. I went to Benedictine College, which is a great, great Catholic college up in Ashton, Kansas. And and there again, like the older guys, the sophomores and juniors, took me under their wing, and and invested in me. We show up, we start playing flag frisbee or ultimate frisbee on, on campus. And they said, "Hey, freshmen, oh, come, you're come like play a natural, frisbee with us." Is that you when know? you started throwing discus, or was that? That's right. No, I started throwing in high school, but I, I threw in college too. So if yeah. you could throw a discus, you could throw a frisbee. I could throw a frisbee pretty good too. <laughs> exactly. So we start playing, and they say, "Join our flag football team." And here, you know, me and my roommate are these two freshmen on a team full of junior guys. Because they're investing and you know they're, they're seeking us out intentionally, like like almost like Jesus, the woman at the well. Like he had to go find the woman at the well. These guys had it on their heart, a missionary zeal. They had to go find young mm. men, young freshmen to invest in. And you know, my my parents split up when I was young. My my uh, parents divorced when I was in second grade. My dad wasn't around much. So these men in high school and these men in college really provided for me a witness and an investment of what it meant to be a man after God's own heart that I didn't have in my life growing up. And I, I can genuinely say I wouldn't be who I am or doing what I do without the investment of those men. And they taught me what it meant to be a man, what it means to be a father, what it means to, to really lay down your life for another. And, and I you know, love, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But we, have that, we have that tradition here in Hawaii of the uncle, more than I've ever seen anywhere else. Um, younger men will, will call older, older guys uncle. And I find myself calling younger guys uncle now because I don't think I'm that old. <laughs> but, but there That's is right. this real there is this real uncling yeah. that, that goes on. I know um, from time to time they come up and say, "Uncle, this happened. Uncle, that happened." Um, and there really is. I know once I, I had had a little frustration with my son Jeremiah, and he was out surfing the pipeline on the North Shore, which is a kind of a radical wave. And one of, and a, one of the world champions up there, uh, Lance O'Connell. Uh, made him go in as he said because i had been sharing with lance the frustration i had with my son six months earlier now here he is, is out in the water six months later out at, at the pipe and lance says go in and, and, and jeremiah goes why why do i have to go in lance he goes you disrespected your father so he had to go in call me call me from the um from his phone and say dad you got to call uncle lance because he, he he won't let me serve pipeline so there was <laughs> uncling there was that brotherhood yeah and i know yeah, and i know community yeah and I know for me too, like when I, I used to have, I, I, I had some land up in Montana and uh, I had, it was raw land, so not even a road into it. So I had the, ro at the road, uh, before even the road was built, I walked in on the land for the second time and uh, there's a little meadow uh, and then a ridge line. And across this meadow, I saw a wolf. This is two miles from Canada, it's two miles from Glacier Park. So it's about as wild a place as you can imagine. And uh, I saw a wolf and I was thinking, that it's really cool to see a wolf on my land. And I, the way he looked at me, I realized, oh, I'm on his land. And he, right. and he had those bright yellow eyes that you think it was really, he looked, but he looked angry and he looked gaunt though. He didn't look that healthy. So go forward six months and the fall is coming. 
it's so quiet. All the, most of the animals that are going to hibernate have hibernated. The insects have kind of done what they're going to do. A lot of birds have left and gone south. So it's, a, it's so quiet that you think you can hear a, a voice, but it's just a thought in your head. That's how quiet it can get. And uh, I had heard a voice, and I go, it's just me thinking I'm hearing a voice. And it, it turned out there was a, a, a tracker coming up by my cabin. And he said, hello, the cabin he came out. He was a Missoula professor, and uh, he tracked apex predators. And so I asked him about this wolf, and he goes, yeah, I know that wolf. That's a lone wolf. He's going to die young. He's going to get diseased and die young. He used to be an alpha male. He got kicked out of the pack. And wolves hunt in packs, and they eat fresh meat. And so... Um, He's, you know, he, he's not going to be able to hunt. He might get their leftovers, but, but uh, he's going to die young. And it really was a lesson to me about the men who, in this day and age, were so isolated from each other. You know, when we do talk, we, we talk uh, disrespectfully about women or we talk about politics. We talk about uh, sports. We talk about our work, which in Hawaii we really don't do much. It's kind of strange here when someone, you meet someone, they say, well, what do you do? It's kind of like the last subject that comes up. But... Um, but we talk about everything about other than what's real. This is what's going on in my life. Um, you know, this is the this is the the grit. You know, and, and I, I heard it said a friend of mine, Father Bryce Lundgren. He's a cowboy in Wyoming. He said, if I was riding my my in his book, The Catholic Cowboy Way, by the way, he says, if 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 my buddy Zeke and I were riding across, you know, the prairie, going up into the mountains, and I said, hey Zeke, you know. We need to become more vulnerable and transparent with each other. He'd kick that horse <laughs> in the side and be gone. <laughs> but if you say we need to get more gritty with each other and more real with each other, that's what men need. Because if you don't have, you only need two other men to, to have that kind of tight relationship with him. You know, I have my man cave, but I have two or three guys. There's three, three other guys in a group text. We've had it for over 10 years. And we contact each other almost daily with stupid stuff. But also, hey, man, I really need prayer or, or, or um, what do I do about this situation? You need, you, need to have a, you need to have two other men in your life. It might be good if one of them is an older man who has more wisdom than you. But you need to have tight rela relationships and you need to cultivate them. We're talking with Brian Miller, the director of evangelization and discipleship for the Archdiocese of St. Louis. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy. Buy 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? 
at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Our co-adventure guide today is Brian Miller. Why do we call it the Bear Wozniak Adventure? It's because every one of us is on an adventure. Being a Christian, think about it. You know the God who created the universe. You know, you ever look look at those pictures of the of the of the quasars or the dark holes or or the the black holes, or you you, you just think about what a dinosaur is. God is wild, and uh, he's not to be trifled with by any means. But can you imagine what it, what it, what it can be like to know to know this God and to have a personal relationship with him? That's why our guest Brian Miller here is, is here today. He's the director of evangelization and discipleship for the Archdiocese of St. Louis. How do we talk story with people? How do we how do we uh, bring them into the kingdom? Are you the type of person who, when someone ha- has a challenge, you maybe never preached to them or said anything like that, but they just know you're the person because they see the way you live that they can go to and have a real conversation with. Um, Brian, I just want to give you give you this space now to just say what's on your heart. Uh, it's really been great talking with you because uh, you have a lot to say, and uh, uh, and a lot of times I have to draw it out of people. But you're an evangelist. You're you're a mouthpiece for the Lord. Just share with us what else you have on your heart about e- evangelization. Yeah. My my kids make fun of me because when we go places, we don't get out quickly. You know, <laughs> we had the uh, we had the Seek conference in St. Louis the last two years, and walking down the hallway at, at Seek was. Uh, was a hard thing. You just that, keep running to people that, we know and have the that's best That's like here in Waikiki. You know? well, we're here in yeah. Waikiki. If if it's like running a gauntlet to get to walk three blocks along the beach, you know, because there's everybody who's saying saying hi or love you and all that stuff. And so I just kind of get keep my head down and try to just make my way through sometimes. But so you're one of those. I certainly am. Yeah, my my favorite uh, icebreaker question. This is funny. My my daughter is starting high school. She's gonna be a freshman in high school and. We were grilling her on day one before they went to freshman orientation, you know, because every parent worries about their kid figuring it out. She's going to a great Catholic school here in town. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. We were like, okay, well, you know, Rose, how are you going to ask people some icebreaker questions or what are you going to talk to them about? You know, and I said, my favorite question is, tell me your life story. Because that I, is you know, a great question. It's, it's That's a great the question, question. At, at parties, you know, and people can go as deep or as shallow as they want to. Yeah. And and she's like, Dad, I'm not going to do that. That's she's like, okay, maybe freshman first day of high school. It's not quite the right. How about question. what did you do last summer? <laughs> Might be yeah, better. yeah, summer vacations. But you kind of go in prepared to. But it, you hit the nail on the head though. You do it by yeah. asking a question. When I'm when we're having coffee or or, or or wherever we are, just asking a question, and it, just just something that shows that you're act actually seriously interested in, in them. Yeah, in to be story. curious about their There's that great Ted Lasso scene where he says, be curious, not judgmental, right? So just to, to ask questions, to dive into people's lives, to be genuinely mm. interested in, in who they are and what they do. And then through that, they're going to pour out their heart to you. They're going to mm-hmm. tell you what's important to them. They're going to, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it might not be super deep right off the bat, but, but again, I think in our culture, in our world right now, there's such a deep spiritual hunger. That when mm-hmm. people see authenticity, when they see someone who's genuinely interested in them, they pick up on those things. And the way, right? and the way and, it happens, and, is, and they're going to pour out. Yeah. And the way it happens, like having coffee here last week, there was a young man there, uh, and uh, he began to talk. And you know how someone will say, "Yeah," and then this happened. You know, like you, you're talking with someone about their own conversion. Yeah, I was converted in 1999, and then I went on and did. The, well, wait a minute. What, what happened when you went to that liberal arts college? And what, what did you mean by studying the great books? Or what do you mean by, by uh, you know, it was rough when you were a kid because you didn't have a dad around? You know, don't let them just gloss yeah. over things. You know, redirect them back a- into a place where they go deeper. Get them to go deeper into their story, you know? Yeah, I just I just wrote this little article for our Catholic magazine, uh, St. Louis, Catholic St. Louis magazine. I write you know an article every other, every other month. That magazine comes out. It gets mailed to every registered household in St. Louis. It's a great wow, that's cool evangelization tool, which is great. But but really the idea was it's assume nothing. 
assume nothing of anyone. So no matter who you're talking to, you can't assume where they are on their spiritual journey. You know, Sherry Waddell talks about that with her thresholds of conversion. Everyone's on a journey. They're on a path. Right. So really step one is is just ask people what their story is. I, I think a lot of times people, especially about evangelization and discipleship in and around our parishes, we assume that just because people are spending time around our parishes that they're there. You know, uh, I know a pastor that hired someone for a job at the parish because they went to 630 daily mass. And it was a terrible hire because the, they didn't have the interior life or the depth or the personal relationship with Jesus that was required to teach others about the faith and, and to really pour it out. So even though she had a good Catholic habit and she was going to mass and there was a good there, he assumed she was somewhere on her faith journey where she wasn't. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, that assume nothing approach goes a really long way. And yeah. and so to start with that is to ask people to tell their stories, to, to be willing to share what God has done in your own life to create the, the spaces to talk and, about and, who and Jesus it lets, is. And yeah. it, lets them, it also lets them, as they're sharing, because this, this is a, our, our radio show, right? We talk story. That's a Hawaiian tradition is to talk story. And so to when someone starts to talk story and you begin to ask them questions, uh, the how and the whys especially, they, you know, I love that moment of detour when all of a sudden you see them take a deep breath and they go deeper. But they're also, by communicating with you, it exposes to them some wisdom about that, what's been going on, but it also exposes to them, wow, that, was, that isn't quite right. Why am, I, why am I thinking that way? Or why did I do that? Why am I living in that, that uh, mindset? You know, so just, but it, it, it doesn't come from any sort of place of this is, it's not like a salesman trying to say, here's how you make a sale. It's like, I love right. Jesus. And you know, when I, when I was converted uh, in, in, in college, that's when I had my deep conversion experience. If you were sitting at a table alone, you were going to hear about Jesus. <laughs> you know, I went into the cafeteria right, with my yeah. lunch plate. Couldn't help I it. I mean, yeah, yeah that's a, it's an overflow. But you have to have that overflow. You have to have that daily time before the Lord and so that he fills you so that you can share with others. Yeah, well, again, it comes out of conviction, and it's conviction of, of what the Lord has done in your own life mm -hmm. and the need you have. I love Pope Francis has a great quote in The Joy of the Gospel. I think it's, it's such an amazing... Um, you know, insight, and it says, the joy of evangelizing always arises from a grateful remembrance. So it's conviction about what the Lord has done for me, that Witness. I would be a mess without Jesus, and that, I, and that I know that other people have that same hunger and that same need. Exactly. And if I'm convinced that the only thing that can fill it is Jesus, then how could I not speak? There's a, there's a, a little thing I posted to the Man Cave today. It's a picture of Johnny Cash. Uh, I, some other ministry posted it, and I can't remember, honestly, which one it was. Uh, but it's a picture of Johnny Cash, and he's just saying, uh, eventually, uh, if, you, if you're seeking the truth, it all boils down to Jesus. Very simple statement, but everybody's on this journey. You know, the thing is, I also was writing, I'm writing a new book, um, Man Meditations for Men of Grit and Grace, and one of them is just that, uh, I forget which saint it was, I want to say Basil, but there was someone who said, someone who, people who live as if they don't have a soul. And so when you begin to ask them questions, it causes them to go a little bit deeper. And then you see the felt need. You see that, and you just go deeper with them. And then, and then it, it may just be a slight, just the smallest thing you can say, but wait till we get to heaven. And someone's gonna say, I'm here because 20 years ago, you had a conversation with someone, and that prompted them to go deeper with the Lord, and then they brought me to the Lord. You have no idea the permutations of what your genuine love and concern and interest can do in people's lives. Yeah, Bernard, Bernard of Clairvaux talks about, you know, our faith should be a, a, a reservoir, not just a channel. Like a channel is something where whatever it receives immediately is passing through it, but a reservoir mm. is deep, and, mm. a, and it's a, an overflow of grace in our own lives. We pour that out to other people and my you know i, I i'm like a quote machine sometimes people make yeah fun it's of me, awesome but like i love it i love, I love it. like yeah. the the catherine of siena i do a three-night parish mission based on this quote but it's you know if you are what you're meant to be you'll set the world on fire yeah so it's really again it's this authenticity. i just use that in my meditations yeah exactly yeah it's this Say authenticity it of, of who no, it's great. It's it's if you if you are who you are meant to be, you will set the world on fire. Amen. And, and so it's if we're responding. So then the question in prayer becomes, Lord, who am I meant to be? What do you mean for me to be? 
and it's a, it is a disciple, but how, what does that look like? How does it manifest itself in my life? What are my unique gifts and charisms? And if we're living in that place of, of joy and strength and, and just love from the Lord, then how can we not help but share the good news yeah, with other it, people? It was the, the quote I was referring to was from John Newman. He was saying, how do you, you, you have a life mission, but you may not even know it until you get to heaven. So you yeah, have no, this purpose. Yeah. yeah, you have this purpose, this direction. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm this, this. But then there's those things you don't even know. Like when, you, when you're sailing, you leave a wake. And you don't even know the impact that that, that, that has. Uh, we're talking with our friend Brian Miller. It's so good to be with you. Hey, someday I want to come speak to your men's conference. Yeah, sure. That, that's the greatest part of my life is uh, I get to go meet the greatest men. But it's also the worst part of my life because it's always in February. It's right. Somewhere cold, and I'm leaving Hawaii to go to go to. Uh, uh, went to. Uh, well, if you need any fa- speakers in Hawaii, let me know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Father Larry Richards Church two winters ago in February, which is on on the shores of Lake Erie. Um, so I tell them, look, I'll come, but but you uh, promise me I won't be outdoors more than ninety seconds the whole time I'm there, and I can do it. I can actually go and not be outside more than ninety seconds. So it's. It's kind of a, I'm kind of proud of it. We're talking with Brian Miller. Brian, we got we to gotta go. How could pe- all this whole time I forgot to tell people how they can find you if you want to lead a, uh, get to know more about what you're learning about evangelization or maybe lead a parish retreat or something. Yeah, we, uh, all my stuff's on the Archdiocese website. We have a great podcast called Go and Make. Uh, so it's about living the practicals of evangelization in your day-to-day life. We do interviews and things like that as well. So go and make wherever you find your podcast. Go if you go to archstl.org slash evangelization. You can find all of our resources and there should be some contact info on there as well. Yeah. So cool. Brian Miller and at the, at the Archdiocese of St. Louis, the Director of Evangelization and Discipleship. We always say goodbye here in the Hawaiian way. Uh, ha means breath and aloha means to give breath. It means to give life to each other, which is really what love is. And so till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.